The Bride of Frankenstein is a very entertaining black and white universal monster movie from 1935. I really love this film. This is probably one of my favorite of the old Universal series. I mean, they're all fantastic in their own way, but I think this one really took it up a level as far as just the crazy story, great acting, and managing to tell not only a monster movie, but a monster movie where you kind of felt a little sympathetic for the creature. So I'll get into that as we go. So kind of break down the plot, uh, there's this interesting introduction as far as telling the story goes, because we see Mary Shelley, the author of the Frankenstein book, and she's talking to the characters Lord Byron and Percy Shelley, and basically breaking down that there was more to the Frankenstein story than we already knew. So that's kind of cool. It kind of breaks us out of the story mode into the perspective of Here's the author telling us more about the story. So it's kind of a clever way to bring us back into the Frankenstein universe. So she starts her narrative, and now we're back into the Frankenstein universe back in the late 1800s. And what I thought was really interesting, the actress playing Mary Shelley, uh, she reminded me, I don't know, this is kind of geeky, but of the actress Elizabeth uh, Barrage, who played uh, Mozart's wife in the Amadeus film back in the 1980s. I, I don't know. That was just my connection. I'm probably the only one who really noticed that. But anyhow, back to the film. So the story begins from the end of the last film, where there was the burning windmill. The villagers are all cheering, but soon they find out that the monster is quite alive, and he's off and killing people again. And uh, one of them who gets away was uh, Una O'Connor. And I, it's funny to see her again. She was kind of this goofy older lady that was in the Adventures of Robin Hood movie with Errol Flynn. So it's kind of funny to identify her and see her again. I think she's a great actress, just a very, a very comedic presence and just really funny to see her kind of yelling and screaming and acting all crazy in this. So uh, the monster is, of course, played by Boris Karloff again. And one of the things I'm realizing in these Universal films is sometimes they will mix and match who plays what character and what monster. And I honestly believe no one can play the monster as well as Boris Karloff did. He just has that tall, staggering height, the creepy, sunken face and the pallor, and he just is perfect as this character. And, uh, you know, although the film is titled The Bride of Frankenstein, just minimal spoiler, the bride doesn't really show up until much later into the film. And honestly, this felt more like watching Frankenstein 2, as so much of this film focuses just on the monster and his story. And, you know, you do really feel sorry for this poor creature after a while. Everywhere he goes, people just scream and run away or form lynch mobs to kill him. So, back into the story, Dr. Henry Frankenstein, he's played again by actor Colin Clive, who was the same one from the first movie, you know, the, it's alive, that guy. Uh, he's back, uh, amazingly, he's still alive, he survived somehow, everybody thinks he's dead, but he's revived back to health, and uh, even though he dramatically claims he's done making monsters and whatnot, well, we know better. So along comes this Dr. Septimus Pretorius, uh, played by Ernest Thysiger, I think his name is. And wow, what an awesome name. Man, I got to start using that as like an online profile. Septimus Pretorius. That's so cool. Uh, and this guy is over-the-top wacky. And he is amazing in this film. This is like brilliant casting. And... It's not just his his acting and him as an actor, but there's this they'll do this weird dramatic lighting on his face to make him look even over the top crazier. And he was fantastic in this movie. I mean, you could just watch the film just to see him. He was such a cool character. And boy, this was weird. The first thing he does as he's talking to Dr. Frankenstein is he reveals to him these tiny little people he has made and he keeps as like pets in little glass jars like a little king and a little queen it's just the weirdest thing but you know for 1935 the effects are actually pretty cool you know he's there he's got a table set up with all these jars with like tiny little people in them and it's wow pretty weird but great stuff so this dr pretorius pretty much forces the doctor Dr. Frankenstein, to create life again so that they can put to use his artificial brain. So, well, we all know better, but 
Okay, let's keep going. So the monster is still wandering about. He's freaking out people. He scares a shepherd girl. He gets scared away. And you get to the scene where he finds this solace with this really nice old blind guy who brings him in, gives him food, drink, and a smoke. And the monster's really enjoying it. And what makes me laugh about this is because it reminds me of this classic Mel Brooks comedy, Young Frankenstein, from 1974. I can't watch this film and not think of the scene. It's so funny. I mean, and it's played by... um, uh, Gene Hackman, he plays the blind man, very tongue-in-cheek, you know. The monster shows up at the door, and he's like, what's your name? Urgh. I didn't get that. You know? <laughs> it's just so goofy. And the scene where he's, you know, pouring soup into his lap repeatedly, you know, it's it's a classic parody. Wait, where are you going? I was going to make espresso. So anyhow, I watched this. I can't help but draw that connection. And yes... Anytime I watch a Frankenstein movie, I'm going to think of the the young Frankenstein movie because it is a classic. Yeah, but it was this scene especially with the old blind man that really brought that to mind. Anyhow, I'm sorry I'm getting off. The actual scene from The Bride of Frankenstein where he befriends the blind man befriends the monster is actually very, it's bittersweet. You know, this monster has only known hatred and anger, and he actually finds this sympathetic old guy who teaches him words like friend and good and smoke. And it's it's a touching moment. You know, you feel sorry for the guy, and you know it's not going to last, because eventually he is found by the mob. He goes off running and eventually catches up with Dr. Pretorius and crew again. So... Dr. Frankenstein is reluctant. He doesn't want to go ahead and do it. So Pretorius has the monster kidnap his wife and promise to release her after they make a bride for the monster. And that was kind of getting into a little weird area of now the Frankenstein monster can be sent to do the bidding of somebody. I, I didn't quite... Okay, it's just a movie. So Dr. Frankenstein agrees. They start getting to work again. They dig up a body... He even does his It's Alive bit again when this new bride becomes animated. And, you know, for the bride, I have to say the makeup and everything about it was phenomenal. I mean, they did such a great job in this film. But then the question becomes is, will she fall for the monster? Will there be true love of the Frankenstein monster and the bride of Frankenstein? Well, you know my system. I don't like to give final spoilers away. So you'll have to go and watch this classic for yourself to see the big conclusion. And honestly, this one was a blast. And in a way, it's even better than the original, I would say. Both have their value, but I just like this one even more. You really grow to feel sorry for the monster. You get a sympathetic view into his life. And you get kind of a brief, merciful scene where you see that he has made a friend. And there's some possibility there. But no, because of who he is, he's always going to be on the run. You know, and he's got a bad rap. And even with that sympathetic soul, nope, he's off running again. The acting in this film is great. Boris Karloff is fantastic. The Franz Waxman musical score is excellent. The makeup, the effects, everything about it is great. And this is one of my favorite of the old Universal Monster movies. So go check this one out.